let's take a brief look at an overview of Sage Intact. Now, as you may know, Sage Intact is a cloud-based platform and can be accessed by a web browser. It is what's called a multi-entity platform, which means that you're able to create multiple entities and transact against those multiple entities all in one environment. A lot of times people call it a single source of truth, which is what we want it to be for the people who use it. Everybody in your organization, whether they be HR, accounting, whoever, they're able to work together out of the single platform. And so we're going to look at some of these different elements that Sage Intact brings to the table for you today. So we got our demo environment here and you'll see, uh, just to start off, we're logged in at what's called the top level. And if I click on that drop down here, you'll see all the entities that you have access to. You can also customize them by controlling the color and the names of these entities, depending on what you need. If say, for example, you only have access to one or two entities, those are the only ones that you would see in that. This is important, say, if you got different levels of access that you want to have for Sage Intact. So if say somebody only has access to two entities, those are the only two that are going to show up on their list when they hit that drop down. Now, say you want to work in just one specific entity. What you can do is you can select that entity that you want to work on and your browser is going to open up another tab. And in that tab, I would be working on that just that single entity there. All the dashboards and transactions would just affect that entity that you've selected. All right, if we go back over to my previous tab, you can see them again, we're here at the top level. And so at the top level, all of the dashboards, what they're doing are they're consolidating the information across all the entities that you have access to. Additionally, you can enter in transactions across multiple entities. This means all of the do to and do from accounts get hit automatically to keep everything in balance. Now, I would say most of the time people access uh, like when people log in and they access Sage Intag, um, they have their landing page set up as like a dashboard. And what we're looking at here is a dashboard. You can have as many different dashboards as you want. Uh, but here in my demo environment, I've got a dozen or so different dashboards to select from with the user I'm logged into. Dashboards are handled with security and basically only the people that have access to that dashboard can see it. So you can have multiple different dashboards for multiple different people in your company when they're accessing Sage Intact. And these dashboards can also have filters on them. In this case, as I go here, I got a filter for which date I'm looking at the information from. I've also got several different departments that I might select from. I've got a different states that I can look at here that I've indicated that maybe I need to do work on these uh, where, you know, I can select now individual states or groups of states. And finally here, I've got a drop down of the jobs that I had here. And all of these drop downs and filters, you can select like individual records from. So if I say select um, and started typing in like a project name here, and it's, it's going to filter out like the projects that meet whatever I've typed in. Uh, I can select like an individual project here and I can apply that to the dashboard and the dashboard is going to refresh. Uh, with just that specific project selected. I can also do this um, to like a job filter as well and select like the job that actually has data in it and all the filters that we have here, uh, you, you have the ability to select like individual records or like a group of records here. As a brief example, in this jobs dropdown, I can start typing in a job and select that job and apply that filter. Now, my dashboard's just going to be looking at like that single job and I can go back to all of the jobs and I can also look at say like a group of jobs depending on how things are organized. So for example, if I wanted to look at a certain project manager, I can type in a PM and that's going to filter my groups for project managers. And I can select a project manager and now just apply that filter and I'm going to be looking at like several projects together. Uh, and these are just the ones where Brandon here in our example is the project manager. Now jobs can be part of like many projects in addition to like project managers, you might have multiple jobs across projects. Maybe I want to see the type of job. Uh, 
and see like the differences there. Whatever you define as the types of jobs in your organization, they may be different like customer industries or like types of jobs that you perform. Maybe, maybe you do plumbing, electricity, and like general contracting. Maybe you got those. You can select the type of job it is and apply that as a filter. Now, obviously these jobs in that have showed up in my list. We can see that here. Uh, we're both at Brandon's jobs and in the types of jobs. So again, you can select multiple groups and slice that data for the jobs that you want to see the drill down on in the dashboard, which is really helpful. I can also use the dashboard to drill down on specific transactions. So for example, here, this, uh, this monthly project margin, I can click on that dollar value here and my report will be brought up comparing my month to date. And we do that here. Yep. So for example, I can click on this and you can see this cost of, and you can see like how these comparisons play out together. You can see them side by side. You can see the current month and the prior month on any of these transactions. I can click also on the dollar amount here and also go back to, yep, to here the original transaction. So this brings up a list of transactions that would make up that amount. In this case, it has to do with the payroll entry. And if I continue to drill down on that payroll entry, it will bring me back to the time entries and I can view the timesheet as well. Now, because this is labor, it's going to bring me back to the timesheet if it came from that. AP will bring me back to the AP transaction and so on. So if I looked at the other dollar amount here, looking at those amounts, it's going to bring me back to an individual AP invoice transaction where I can look at the attachment if it was uploaded to this transaction as well as see those details. Another feature inside of Intact is the ability to collaborate or talk with other users. So this tool down here on the bottom allows us to tag other users in the system and ask a question of that user in which case the user would be emailed. It would have a link to bring them right to this transaction where they could respond. You can see this transaction did not have an attachment. However, if I wanted to include one at any time, I can grab that document off of an email or off of a desktop, drag it into the field and attach it as a copy of that document. Now, we're back on the dashboard and you can really drill down from any of the blue hyperlinks on the screen that would bring you to the detailed transactions. This project overview report, for example, it pulls in a lot of information from a project detail. Now, it's important to understand that the reports in Intact are all configurable, so you can decide which columns show up on your report, meaning that these are modifiable depending on your business needs. The columns I'm displaying in this project overview by project manager are the ones that I selected to show on this report, but they could be changed if I were to drill down on one of the projects here. The drill down is going to bring me right to that project setup screen where I'll be able to make changes to the job or review any of the information on the job setup. Going to the right addressing, looking at the columns that go to the right, we're tracking things like the customer, contract amount, and the project estimate. Those two columns give me the ability to do some calculations like my estimated gross profit. Then on this report, I decided to add some transaction information in. To start with, I've added commitments. So these are going to be open purchase orders or subcontract agreements. When you book one of those types of transactions, it's going to automatically commit that dollar value to the job itself. When the invoice then comes in, it's going to reduce the commitment and move the cost to the total cost column. You can see I've included the amount that I've built so far. And again, the total cost column is where I can drill down to see all of the transactions that would make up that dollar value. Again, I can drill back all the way to the source transactions, showing you the granular capability you'll be capable of with Sage Intact. Finally, we've got several calculations here in my report, as well as some conditional highlighting. For example, it will show you where it's negative and make it red. 
With yellow, there might be something there I need to take a look at. Now, dashboards can have as many or as few components as you want. And just scrolling down on this dashboard gives me the ability to see some of the other components that I may wish to include on a dashboard. As I mentioned, we can have as many different dashboards as you want, and the dashboards can be very functional depending on your business needs. For example, I may want to see all the things that I need to approve on my dashboard and be able to view those transactions and actually approve or decline or ask questions about them as needed. Dashboards are typically giving us information that has been entered into the system, but entering the information into the system is also pretty easy. If I click on this drop down menu here, you can see the navigation inside of Intact. The system is going to highlight all the access that all the areas of the software that I have access to. I can configure this menu to order it the way that I want to see the records. And by clicking on one of the lists, I can see the things that I can do in that area. So for example, in my job section, I can view a list of jobs by clicking on the words jobs, or I can click on this plus to bring me to the screen right where I could create a new job. I could also add things to my personal favorites menu so I can click on the star on the left hand side here and I can get to those areas rather quickly. And finally, if I double click on any area of the software, I'll see what we call a workbench inside of Intact that would display the most common activities that would be done in that area. So for an accounts payable person, I might work with my vendors, enter in bills and get those bills paid. Each area of the software has a similar workbench that helps guide you to guide you through the processes that you might do in that area. Overall, this has been a general overview of Sage Intact, and we hope you've learned a lot. If you have more questions or you'd like to dive in deeper with maybe a demonstration, feel free to reach out to us. And as always, we'll see you in the next video.